Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. In this video, I would explain about Jenkins Agents of Slaves in detail. Before explaining about Jenkins Agents of Slaves, let us understand the Jenkins Distributed Architecture. This is Jenkins Distributed Architecture, which is also called as Master Slave or Controller Agent Architecture. So in this architecture, we create jobs inside master and these job configuration will be stored in the master. And these jobs will be executed either in master or in slaves. That means the workload of the jobs will be offloaded to agents. And these agents can be created in, inside a VM or a container or a Kubernetes pod. So, why do we need agents? Generally, when we uh, create jobs in this master, we can execute the jobs inside master itself. But as the number of applications increases, the resources inside master are not sufficient. That means the CPU, memory, etc are not sufficient for executing more type of application jobs. So in that case, we need to have separate machines or containers where we can execute our Jenkins jobs. So the first reason is we have to balance the workload. So actual execution of jobs will be offloaded to agents instead of execution inside master. And the second reason is we have different types of applications and each application will need different types of operating systems and tools. Uh, for example, some applications may, may run on Linux or some applications may uh, build on only Windows machines where we have batch files etc. So in that case, we need to have like, separate machines uh, for Windows based applications and separate machines for Linux based applications. And this problem can be uh, solved by using containers where we can create different images for different types of application builds. And we can execute uh, all the builds in a single machine by creating different containers in the same machine. So in this architecture, what exactly happens? All the job information, which is job configuration, everything will be stored inside master. But the actual job execution will be done by agents or slaves. What are the different types of agents we have? So we have like two types of agents. One is outbound and inbound. Another is permanent and dynamic. So let us understand outbound and inbound first. So in the outbound agent type, so generally Jenkins will access the slave using SSH. So for this an SSH connection to be established from uh, Jenkins master, Jenkins layer. For Linux based machines, we can use this type of uh, outbound agents. So where, uh, what we need to do, we need to create uh, SSH keys from master and the public key will be stored in uh, slave. And using this private key public key connection, this master will initiate the connection to the Jenkins slave. Once the connection is established, it will transfer all the required files means Jenkins remoting jar file will be there. That file will be transferred to the slave and that remoting jar will be executed inside a slave to connect to the master. So that way uh, both will uh, communicate uh, in a bidirectional way to achieve our job execution as well as the results will be sent back to the master. So that is about outbound. So in outbound what happens exactly? So the connection will be initiated from the master itself to the slave. So most of the control will be there in the master. So we do not need to do much other than setting up the SSH connection from master to slave. So in the inbound case, uh, where uh, for example, if we take Windows machines, so generally we don't have SSH, right? So so what we need to do for for Windows machines, uh, we need to create the agents or slave inside our Windows VM, and that agent will initiate the connection to the thing with master. So generally this type of agents will be done using JNLP which is also called as like Java network uh, launch protocol where the application launch will happen in slave from server. So we will see this uh, JNLP and outbound when we set up actual agents. Second type of classification is permanent and dynamic. So in the permanent type of agents, we will create the agent and we will keep the agent continuously running. That means when we have the builds, even after the build completes, we will keep the agent running. Uh, for the next builds. So we will not uh, destroy the agent once our build completes. So that is called permanent agent. So in the dynamic type of agents, uh, whenever the build happens, the agent will be created dynamically and the job executes. Once the job execution completes, then uh, the agent will be destroyed. So generally these type of uh, agents will be done using cloud like our Docker containers or Kubernetes pods. We can also create uh, our virtual VMs uh, using AWS, GCP or Azure and we will keep the builds running. Once the build completes, the VM will be destroyed. So that way also we can create dynamic type of agents. So we will see uh, different types of agents set up in the coming sessions. I hope uh, you understood this architecture. So in the next videos, I would 
explain about setting up different types of agents like uh, permanent agent setup or dynamic agent setup also outbound agent inbound agent so all these types will be set up in the next uh, sessions thank you for watching if you like the video please subscribe to my channel and also please share with your friends